Hi, I'm Rachel McLeod, and I am a licensed clinical social worker and emotional wellness coach. And today I want to talk about recovering from trauma and how to feel safe again or how to feel safe for the first time ever. And I know many of you watching this video are coming from multiple spectrums of that. Some of you have already figured out how to be safe and how to start generating feelings of safety from the inside out. Others of you are um, professionals doing this work, helping people get safe and re-establishing re that safety. And others of you are wherever you're at in this. And um, I think this is going to be awesome and exciting for you because I've written, <laughs> I've done some art for you. No, I've written some maps and some charts so you can really understand this. So I'm going to treat you all to like, um, how I treat my clients. <laughs> they get access to my fabulous art skills. And, um, and, but we're gonna, you're, we're gonna have a good time with this because it's, this is phenomenal. Um, this feel, feeling of safety is foundational to almost everything that we do as humans. And so if we can't generate that feeling of safety, because it is a chemical concoction and this, it is a product of our inner world, our, we make this. Um, a lot of times this is something that we're, um, Oh gosh, I want to dive into that. Okay, so but this but safety is something that we need in our relationships. It's 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 what we're talking about. I don't feel safe here. Um, when you did that, you made it so that I didn't feel safe. I don't. I can't feel safe. I'm having panic attacks at night because I don't feel safe. Um, I didn't take that risk at work because I didn't feel safe. Um, I can't stop helicoptering over my children because I don't feel safe. I don't feel like I can create that safety. Right. And so this comes out in our language all the time. But really, this is one of the big um, requirements of your nervous system to begin growing this safety piece. And so this is vital, essential to healing from trauma. This is some this is part of the work that must be done. And I'm going to talk to you about how to do that and how to do that quickly. You're working with the nervous system and, and um, that safety piece is an electrical part of us and a very energetic part of us. So when you get this right, it starts, move, starts moving at electric speed, at lightning speed. And so, and that's how the brain really, that's its natural pace when it's adjusting and regulating and looking around and um, if shooting thoughts and firing off all sorts of things in your brain to create solutions and to change and to upgrade functions. All of that stuff happens very quickly when you can get the brain to work at its natural speed and to work well. And so when I'm working with people, this is something I am always after. This is the one of the end products. This work needs to be done well. They need to have safety buried deeply into their nervous system. And, um, and this is something that I help people accomplish in about two to six months on average. And you're going to see, I'm going to explain, there are some people that are like, why am I not in the two to six month range? And I'm going to show you exactly why that is and what to do about that. And there's nothing wrong with that. Not everybody fits into that category of two to six months. And it doesn't matter if you, it takes you a year. But let me tell you, even with some of my most complex, most highly traumatized people, they start regulating very quickly and they start they start feeling and generating safety very very quickly um, even in within a year so I put them on a pretty strict <laughs> uh, protocol that they're welcome to follow or not um, but we lay out a path for them to get this result and to get it quickly so um, and yes okay so like where do I want to go now um, Give me a moment. Okay, um, so this is foundational to recovering from trauma. And I'm gonna talk about this from two forms because one, um, I'm gonna talk about this from the, you know, you felt safe before, now you don't because you had a traumatic event and your brain has to help you make new, it has to adjust to now create safety after it's had a, a traumatic experience. I'm gonna talk about that. I'm gonna also talk about this from the perspective of complex childhood trauma when safety needs were never uh, fully wired in and were, un were never fully met. And so, and how to recover from that and how to get your system to start generating uh, that, the, your, the, your 
level, the level of safety that you need to be well in the world and how to get that to happen from inside the chemicals, the neurological activity, the, the neural pathways, and just the brain work that makes that happen. And so that's really what I want to talk about. And so hear me tell you that even if you have never felt safe before, this is something that can be accomplished. Okay, brains are ready to wire and fire this stuff at any time. It just needs to be done. It would have been great if it was done when it was developmentally time and appropriate, which was like, you know, that sweet window of zero to seven, right? Um, if you had parents that were emotionally unwell, likely this, I'm talking to you, your safety needs were not met. And so it leaves this big gap that we can fill in now. We can do the work of wiring your brain now and helping you flourish and be healthy and heal and thrive. So, and this is how, okay, so I'm going to back up a little bit. I got, I have drawings everywhere. I went nuts. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to start at childhood because I want you to see developmentally how this stuff happens. And then, um, and then I'm going to, okay. Drawing number one. Okay. This is your nervous system on stress and stress is how brains grow. And so we, it's stress. We don't want no stress because then we become stagnant and we don't grow and we can actually self-destruct and do a bunch of stuff down here. It's really important to, if you don't have a lot of stress going on, to really build some beautiful skills in there. Otherwise, lots of things happen there. Um, the, there's a middle area of stress that is really a growth stress. It's fabulous. And then there's stress that's over that threshold and that's trauma. That's traumatic stress. It's too much for your system and that can be harmful and damaging and um, it really create a lot of problems for us. And so that's, we, we're not, we don't want that stuff. We wanna, if we get up there, we wanna bring it back down into the middle area. And, um, but right, life happens and here we go, right? So, but what's supposed to happen here is that we go about life, something happens, we get dysregulated, then we come back down into a regulated place and then we go up again and we do this and we come back down that is really a healthy pattern your brain understands hey we can get upset and dysregulated and we'll come back down it'll be fine and it's really nice when these things are spread nicely apart that you just have lower levels of stress right manageable levels of growth opportunities and um, but this happens from the time when we're born we come out we're, we're we're new we start screaming and that's when we get the first opportunity to start regulating um when we come into the world we're this big ball of nerves that haven't yet been connected and the way our parents are touching us holding us rocking us soothing us regulates our nervous system helps us actually hook up our head to our toes and our fingers and our nose and I'm rhyming. Okay. Um, but you see what I'm saying? Like it's building our neurological connection. And so that's our parents really have an opportunity to really wire us nicely for life. Right. And when parents are responding to us and comforting us, they are actually a major part of our nervous system. They are our regulatory system. We can't, we don't know how to regulate yet. And so when they go and they meet your need and they say, oh, you're hungry, let's get you some food and you eat, right? Or, hey, you're wet, let's change your diaper. You know, hey, you're sad or you're lonely or we were, we got disconnected there for a little, little bit too long for you. Let's, let's bring it back in. And right, they're, they're regulating the nervous system because you're dysregulated and you're letting people know and they're responding and you come down. So much is happening here. I can't even get into it, right? But this is really an important phase, right? This doesn't happen for everybody. Sometimes what happens is children get dysregulated and they stay dysregulated. And the brain and the nervous system learns that this is the pattern. We go up and we're, in, we're not coming down. And then it really gets conditioned to this and this becomes normal. And so people are like, I don't know what the problem is. And so other people are like, you know, you're, you're a little um, reactive. You're a little bit on edge. And they're like, this is normal, right? And that's because this is really what's normal. And, and our nervous system gets set to that. And so that's one of the challenges here. But I'm going to talk about that in a second. 
okay? Um, but when, when this happens, that's what it looks like, okay? Now, let's see. I got all excited, but I'm putting the order together right now, as you can see. Um, okay, so in the beginning of your life, this is your next diagram. In the beginning of your life, right, you have this much need for safety. And if you've got parents that know how to hook that up from the inside out of you with your nervous system, then they're meeting all of this need in the beginning. They're doing all of the work. And then as you grow in age, you're starting to learn how to do it. And they're doing it a little bit less because the full need is being met by both of you. And as you progress, pretty soon you're doing the majority of your regulating and parents are adding a little bit. And then at the end, of your teenage years or somewhere in there, you're able to meet your own safety needs, your own, you're able to generate your and your the full capacity of your emotional needs for safety. Okay, and so you go on and you can create that independently. This is awesome, right? This is like this is these are goals right here. Okay, parents, this is what we're really going through. You and me both, okay? Um so, but let me tell you what happens in um, childhood trauma. And then we'll move over to, anyway, stay with me here. Okay, in childhood trauma, complex childhood trauma, you know, or parents that are emotionally unwell or they don't, they have never figured out how to be safe so they can't meet your full safety need, right? And so let's say you're born and your parents meet this much of your safety need. This right here becomes your normal. And so they meet this need and your nervous system gets used to that. And it gets used to having all of this stuff unmet. Okay. And as you go through your childhood, you will come in, into this line and you will start doing it and they will start doing it. And you will start doing it more and they will do it a little bit less and it will go on. And at the end of your teen years, you will be able to generate the full amount of safety that your parents set as the level of norm your nervous system doesn't really have this stuff in there and you're used to it but now you're able you're independently able to generate all of that and that is the unsafety that you are constantly living with and it's affecting many things it's affecting your relationships and your ability to take risks and your ability to feel safe anywhere and so a lot of times, this is why people are staying in, mostly in their survival system, because that threat of not safe is happening the majority of the time. It's happening continuously. Okay. And so this is one of the problems. Okay. Now, if this is you, we need to get your brain to start and your inner, your whole body to start generating safety at this level. And it's not yet. It doesn't know that that's even a thing. Right. And so that's the work that we're we really are after. That's what we want to do. OK. And so what happens. Is we need to start teaching the nervous system to regulate. We need to start teaching the, the nervous system to come up and down. Right. Because what happens right here is where's my where's my drawing? OK, when when this happens, right. It's dysregulated and then it comes down. That's the pattern we need to start training it in. And if you've got childhood trauma, this is you, right? So once it starts going up, what we need to do at any point along this line, and as soon as this, as soon as we possibly can, and this is what I train people to do faster and faster and faster. Sometimes you get up here, and especially in the beginning, um, people will start intervening back here. And the more we practice this, the more they recognize, oh, hold up, I'm dysregulated. Because a lot of that is like, I, this is my normal. What are you talking about? I'm dysregulated. I'm not dysregulated. I'm, I'm, I'm fine, you know? Um, and so it's about building in that awareness that you're even dysregulated. And then sometimes people really need to under, get some understanding that if they intervene, it's going to matter. Because a lot of times we feel like it's not going to matter anyway. And so a lot of times here, it's important wherever we can start intervening, 
and we start this right away. And what we have happen is that when we get the right intervention on board and we intervene at that point, we'll start noticing that what would have gone all the way up will come back down. And at that point, they feel like this. <sighs> How interesting. And you'll see them kind of look around themselves like, what is this? Right? And it's their, their nervous system is getting the first dose of what a regulated state looks like intentionally. Like, I have the power to create this? Holy cow. And that's just like a freak incident to your brain. But what happens the next time is once this happens, and even if we are intervening over here and we bring it down, now all of a sudden you got two and your brain says, hold up, this happened this time, this happened this time. What is this? What are you doing? And the next thing you know, you get dysregulated again a third time and you start intervening sooner and you start dropping. And then you're back here and you're at number four and all of a sudden you go up and you use your intervention and it comes down and then up and down and your brain is like there is a pattern here something's going on and and over and over again and pretty soon the brain will start to say hold up if we come up we should also be able to come down you know that thing that we used to do that makes us feel that good that i don't think we're supposed to be up here i think we're supposed to come down here and your brain will create solutions to get back down here and in the beginning it will use the interventions that you begin that you that it learns that will do this to you and bring you down, okay, in, into a regulated space. Okay, now let me tell you what, let's talk, talk about this. Right here, this is a very painful, exhausting place to live in, and many people live here their entire lives, decades, and they are exhausted and depleted. And what they'll learn probably around their teenage years, if not earlier, is that there are things in the natural everyday life world that will help them regulate and come down to a regulated place. And it will be by accident that they find it because they haven't been taught healthy coping strategies or helping regulation strategies by their by their immediate caregivers. And so a lot of times they will accidentally find that smoking marijuana at 13, oh man, that will chill you right out and get you into that regulated state. Holy cow. We should try that again, see what that happens again. Well, can that be repeated? Next thing you know. You got another, you're getting some more marijuana. And now your nervous system comes down to a regular state and you are just, ah, this is good. The next thing you know, you think marijuana is like the best thing on earth because it's actually putting you into a brain state and, and, you, and a physical, a physiological state of safety, of regulation, which isn't really safety, it's artificial. Um, but it sure does feel good and it's a whole lot better than this. And your brain learns this and it's fast. So it starts wiring this in and now here you go. Or let's say you find food and you as a kid and you get dysregulated and no one's there to help you regulate like hugs, pats on the back, empathy, kindness, um, rocking, hugs. I said that, but I can, you can't have too many of those if they're healthy, right? Um, but all of a sudden you're here and then you hit the fridge one day and you find those donuts in there and oh man, all that sugar and sweetness, your brain starts to associate that with regulation and safety. And so all of a sudden that's its regulation tool. And then you're 40 years later and you're like, I'm addicted to sugar. Yeah, you are, but you're not. You're addicted to being regulated. And it is your brain is in body are using sugar or food to do that or marijuana or alcohol or all these things. We're really addicted to feeling this way, regulated. My screen's flipped over here. That's really, really important. Because if you just think, oh, I'm an addict, you're missing a great opportunity to understand your nervous system is on fire. And this is the real problem. And when you start working with the real problem, you can create the real solution, which is creating this pattern, training your nervous system in this pattern using other interventions. And after a while, your body it be, doesn't need, okay, so let me, let me tell you this. I, the interventions I have people use to really retrain this part of themselves are emotional freedom techniques, thought-filled therapy, energy medicine, and EMDR. Okay, those are my go to. I teach people how to do this themselves because we got a lot of work to do. Because you know what? This guy right here is happening all day long 
when I get clients, my new clients. This is their pattern. We have like thousands of opportunities to intervene and bring people to a regular state all day long. Now, I don't try to overexhaust them, but I do have them intervene a total of two hours a day because we got work to do and we need to get this in. Now, that means five minutes here, one minute there, 10 minutes there, five minutes here, 20 minutes there, dot, dot, right? And so throughout the day, they've intervened and regulated, manually regulated their nervous system for two hours. This is huge. This creates a big snowball effect and has a lot of accumulated benefits. And we want this online, we want this new patterning in as soon as possible. Okay, and the four interventions, I'm gonna repeat that for Elizabeth, that I treat, teach people to use, and there are more. These are the ones I specialize in. Um, emotional freedom techniques, and these ones all work with the survival system in the brain. That Those parts of the brain are the ones that stop healing from happening. It, they, the survival system blocks the, the healing process. And so we need to open that so that healing can happen. And that healing process results in regulation. And it's more than a healing process. I haven't found a good word because it's healing is just one tiny aspect of all the things that happen during this one brain function, which it also upgrades your function, heals you, is part of understanding and solution, word finding, wiring the brain, creating new subconscious programming. This, this one process is powerful and it's bigger than healing and it's blocked by your survival system. So if you don't feel safe, right? If you don't have this, if you got this going on, that's part of the brain, that process, the healing process is blocked by this right here. So we have to interrupt this to get healing to happen. And that's that, that healing happening is how the brain naturally gets rid of symptoms. But because this happens for decades, Healing is not happening. Symptoms are piling up. And that's how we have whole disorders. Okay? So as I was saying, the four interventions I specialize in, in using, helping people use, and also training people to use for themselves is emotional freedom techniques, thought-filled therapy, energy medicine, and EMDR. Um, EMDR is the riskiest of these three. So I hand this, I teach this in very slowly. Um, and yes, so, but it is in there and that's part of the thing. There are some, anything, any intervention that works directly and specifically with the nerve, with the nervous system and the, the survival system, uh, the amygdala, the hippocampus, those interventions that engage those ones to, hey, let's, let's chill a little bit, let some regulation happen open the door to healing. That's Those are the ones that we're interested in because you can try to go through the prefrontal cortex, which is what talk therapy strategies do. We're using talk. The, 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 the survival system doesn't use words for its communication. That's not its native language. So you can talk till the cows come home and that part of the brain's not listening. And it's not that the part of the brain that shuts the, the healing pathway, that part of the brain is not a reasoning center and it's not a logical center. So there's no amount of reasoning or logicing you can do with that part of the brain to say, come on, it's fine. Let's do some healing. No, keep talking. I'm going to just stand right here. And so we really need to influence this part of the brain, but and very, very directly. So really all I help people do is open up that part of the brain over and over and over again, because once this part's out of the way, the rest of the brain can do its phenomenal, awesome job. And so there's lots of strategies for that. And every once in a while, the rest of the brain needs a little support, like 3% of the time. But for the most part, that usually runs very well. It's this part. It's, and it's, it's, and it, Anyway, and so that process gets blocked because of trauma and, it, and the brain doesn't know how to use it anymore. And so when we use interventions like this for two hours a day, we are teaching the brain to, hey, when you have this problem, walk it through your healing process. Okay, hey, there's another problem over here. Let's grab that and let's walk it through your healing process. And we're going to do this all day because we need to recondition and rewire the brain to do its healing function. And because trauma came on or, or the, 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 this pattern has never been introduced, we need to make sure we, we're not going to leave this to chance. We're going to go in there. We're going to grab those things and we're going to walk them through. And this process 
which I, I teach this as well, but this is important that it's it's done without, right? We, we can't overstress this process. Otherwise we go backwards. We create more trauma and we shut this process down and we make this process a lot more, a lot longer than it needs to be. We want to keep the pain levels down because we want to keep the stress levels down. We don't want to go rushing into really painful trauma and talking about it and feeling it and reliving it. Oh my gosh, no, no. We want to, we want to use other tactics to make those, those traumas. We want to, we are going to move those through the healing process. The brain has to heal those in order to regulate and in order to reorganize and to learn that that was dangerous, but it's not now. And we're actually safe now. The brain has to figure that out. You can tell it all you want to, but if the brain hasn't figured that out, it doesn't matter. Okay, so when we're doing this, it's really important that we do it and we walk the brain through this. You can, yeah, I don't have anything to say about that. That's, this, this is my opinion. This is what I do. This is how I get people results in a very short amount of time. Um, and it's really getting shorter and shorter um, Some because I'm getting better. And I was also, I think that um, people are coming to me prepared to work. They know by watching my videos, I'm put them to work <laughs> and working with their survival system. So I'm having to do a lot less convincing and they come up and they're like, what do I do? And so we're just doing it. Um, and so that's really, really awesome. But I need to move to my next, okay. So this is what happens here. Okay, every time, right over here on my chart, this is the pattern that we want, right? We want it to come down. You go up, you come down. You go up, you come down. Now over here, when we do that, right, we have these safety needs and so we get up here and we get dysregulated. All of a sudden, we find something here and we use an intervention and we bring our, actually, here we go. We, we're here and we find something, we use an intervention and while we regulate, our safety ability comes up higher. We feel safer in that moment. It might be a split second, but it has registered as lightning in your brain, I'm sure. But it has registered in your brain as something. And then your brain's like, oh, oh there's something up there. It feels good. And it will probably come down very quickly, right? And then the next opportunity will happen and then you'll, you'll get dysregulated and we'll intervene with an intervention and it's gonna, your brain's gonna go up and say, whoa, something's up here. I haven't been here before, right? And we want it to keep having those experiences because pretty soon it will start getting curious about what is that? And it will start sending itself up there to be like, what is this? How do we make that happen more often? Which is exactly what your brain is supposed to be doing for you. It's supposed to be trying to help you figure out how to be healthier and happier. And so once you can launch it up there into, wow, I feel very safe. This is what having your safety needs feels like. Even if it comes back down, that hit right there is so important. And this is why we could do this weekly in sessions and it will take a long time. Or I can have you do this for two hours every day and we will get a lot of stuff done. We will have a lot of these little hits and your brain will be up there more. It'll be like, oh, what is this? <laughs> And the more it does that, the more it like starts building scaffolding and it starts saying, oh my gosh, what if we do this? And you'll see it plotting in the background. Your subconscious mind will be back there and be like, well, how are we going to get there? What if we try this? And your whole brain starts plotting to do this. And that's what we want it to do because it's starting to feel it in. And it's going to, you're going to notice it. it's easier and easier and easier. Okay. Um, I'm going to take a pause right here and tell you that with my process, and I have a I have a very specific program for this called Inner World Transformation by the world, but by the way. Um, and I walk all my clients through this, whether you're doing therapy with me, whether you're in my intensive uh, coaching program, whether you're doing my self-study program, this is what I'm walking you through. And when I do this, and I've tested this on many, many people, almost a hundred, this what it what happens is it takes what i found is it takes 120 to 300 hours of specific and targeted brain work to move a whole disorder into remission anxiety depression or trauma traumatic stress disorder 
Okay. And so sometimes people come to me and they've done some of the work. And so we're, 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 we're earlier on. And so we're at the 120 mark. Sometimes people are coming to me and they've got complex childhood trauma that usually will land people in a 300 mark. If they've done other work outside of working with me in this process, it, that shortens their time here. But that's 120 to 300 hours of generating this in your brain and teaching your brain how to do that and how to walk it through the healing process. Now, let me tell you, that sounds like a long time, but if we do this for two hours every day, it's two to six months. If we do that weekly in therapy sessions with a therapist, relying on them to do this work for us, that's two to six years. I'm going to say that again because my screen froze. But if we wait doing that route, it's two to six years to redo the nervous system. And the next thing I'm going to show you is why you don't want to wait that long. Um, but I, I think you're following me. So that's the work we're doing. And what results from that is this, right? You got complex childhood trauma. Your parents gave you this much safety need. You needed all of that. You come to the end. You're over here now. You've been living with this for 30, 40 years. You know, you're in your 30s or 40s now. And you decide, I want that. And so you start to do this plan. You do this process. And you're, and every time your brain hits one of these, it experiences one of these updrafts, it starts working around there and it's like, whoa, and it starts to go up and then you'll notice it going down and up and you keep at this long enough and pretty soon your needs, your safety needs are being met and your body is able to generate sufficient amounts of, of safety for you on the chemical level, emotional level, mental level, energetic level, very, very quickly. And that feels yummy. And then it can learn if this situation moves over here and I don't have this, I know exactly how to build this. And that's really what we want to build in. We want your brain to restore its creativity in meeting your needs. Okay, so... All right. Now, that was a lot of talk about complex childhood trauma. But I want to talk to you about what happens when you had a great childhood, but you had a traumatic experience because this happens a lot as well. Or you had a series of traumatic experiences, right? Okay, so your parents met your, your safety needs up here, right? Let me get your diagram up here. Where'd you go? Oh, this one. Okay, right? This is you. You're living up here, living safe, feeling safe. Your brain is, is creating all the chemicals and emotions and, and thoughts of safety all the time. It's great. You're living good. You're having a great time. You're kicking butt in your life, right? Because you can take risks. You can, in relationship, in love, in um, in finances, in your, in your job, in anywhere in your life, you feel safe enough to take risks and risks means growth. And we, the way life is set up, you're rewarded richly for risks. Oh yeah. Thank you, Jess. Jess says, or you think you, or thought you had a good childhood. Oh, you know what? I'm going to say a couple things before I, we go there. Um, Many of us believe that. That was me. <laughs> I was one of those. But really, um, your brain is the one who decides that. And your parents, this this is this has to do with brain function, not your parents were terrible. I mean, your parents may have been terrible. I've seen it. I mean, I've, I've I do a lot of trauma work. Uh, there's many parents I would give an F to, even though, you know, I think they're valid humans. But this, you know, if we're evaluating function, I'm just going to hand them an F. Um, there's parents that will meet the whole thing, but regardless, doesn't matter. Um, what really matters here, because my judgments on that matter don't matter, right? But what matters here is, are your safety needs being met? And, and I will have people that come to me that are confused. They're like, I don't know why I have this whole anxiety disorder. I had a great childhood. And they had a great, they have a great relationship with their parents. They have, they have, I look through it and there are no big hits for, um, you're deceived. Um, <laughs> or to 
delusional or are working with a very powerful denial um, program running, right? We do that. Um, so, but really what we're assessing for is how your, your nervous system doing. And if you've got an anxiety disorder, you're generating feelings of I'm not safe, I'm not safe, I'm not safe, I'm not safe. So this whole thing is, is empty. And your parents may have been wonderful, but maybe they didn't know how to work with your nervous system specifically. And this happens. And the more we're aware that this happens, the more we can take a step back and say, am I meeting my kids' needs? Actually, their nervous system needs. And you'll, you can, that's a really great assessment tool. You can see a lot about that. But this doesn't always have to do with your parents are bad or dysfunctional. It can just mean that they just didn't know how to help your nervous system feel safe. And so the deal is there is that once you do, everybody wins. Once your brain figures this out and it's now generating the thing, you get all the great relationship, you get all the love, and your brain can do it for yourself. And so that's really, really wonderful. Okay, one other thing I want to say before moving on. This right here is really awesome. And I talk about this as if it's really awesome. Um, but what this feels like to people from the inside out, and I want you to understand and recognize this, is that people will have the first feelings of safety ever, and they will feel like, oh my gosh, and then it will leave. And they're like, I'm back to where I was. This isn't working. And I, I, want, I want you to do that, and let's apply some, because right there, that whole fit, that, ah! It's a lot of emotion, and that's what we're looking for. We want to pull that through. So I want you using an intervention while all that emotion is coming through, right? And this is the process. And brains start holding this longer and longer and longer, and the ability to tolerate that is huge. And the interventions help you to be able to tolerate that because this right here becomes more and more painful when you've experienced the highs. People that are down here, there can be very comfortable until they get this for a while. And now they're back down here and it's excruciatingly agony, excruciating agony. There we go. And that agony needs to be brought down into the stress levels. It's a stress. It, your, your body will interpret that as a threat to your, your survival. It's too much. Right. And so we really want to be using interventions on all that anger and frustration and hurt and disillusionment and hopelessness and distress. It's part of this process. Right. Because it's a form. Right. You're enjoying the good stuff and then all of a sudden it goes away and it's dysregulating. So here we have the opportunity to bring it back into regulation. And then it's going to go up and then you're going to, and then you're going to be, you're going to come down and you're going to feel happy. You're going to be like, oh my gosh, here it is. And then it's going to go up. Again, and you're going to be mad and dysregulated, and it's not here. We want to use interventions on that. Those are great opportunities many people miss to regulate their nervous system. And if you're at the beginning of this work and you don't do anything but regulate your nervous system all day, I'm high-fiving you, okay? I wish we could, as a culture, let this stuff happen because it doesn't take a long time, right? If we could sit and do eight hours a day of regulating our nervous system, We'd probably be out of this, out of severe complex childhood trauma in like one to two months, just amount of time, right? However, maybe, maybe not. I've never experimented with that. It could be lying. I don't know. I don't have any data to back that up, but I'm just making a point that may or may not be true. Okay. All right. <laughs> Hi, Corey. <laughs> oh, she said not to be a creeper. <laughs> I don't want to invite any creepers, but I am so glad you found me too. <laughs> uh, followers, let's do that one. <laughs> I wanted to say the uh, anyway. I'm gonna. I need to turn my air conditioning down because I just can't do it. Um, let me do that, and I have another two diagrams to show you. Okay. Okay, let's see where I am over here. Actually, okay, here we go. This is the last diagram. I thought I had two. 
I, they might be buried in my pile now. Um, this is you. Well, hold up. Excuse me. I got to go through my pile. Okay. Yes, I think I'm here. <laughs> All right. Hi, Melissa. Um, okay. This is you at your regular full, getting your full needs met of safety. Your brain's just pumping safety out, safety juice through your system left and right. And all the electrical currents are like safety, 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 right? And you're going along your life and you're kicking butt, you're doing all the things and a trauma, a trauma happens, okay? What happens here is that your a traumas are not safe, right? We learn that they they're painful. Our brain interprets pain as something to stay away from. Um, our the survival system does. They it interprets pain and traumas as as a threat to our survival, right? And um, but the whole brain functioning together really takes trauma and creates more growth out of it. Um, but what happens is that when trauma happens, it kind of, it, it shows your brain, you need more safety. If that could happen, you're not really safe. And, you know, maybe if you have a loved one pass away, you're like, there's no safety anywhere. People can they, they be snatched out all the time. Or if you get fired, you know, your brain is like, holy cow, I thought we were fine. It came out of nowhere. I don't even know. I don't even know. Right? Because what will happen here is that your your brain learns that it does not it's not creating enough safety and this incident means that it it needs this much safety in the world and it's realizing I don't have safety here I'm empty of safety and that feels and looks like this this is your brain on trauma. Right. So after a traumatic event, especially when it's recent, this is what brains do. This is why you you have it. You get fired and you lay awake thinking, thinking, thinking. You're replaying the scenarios. You're replaying all the conversations you ever had because your brain is in the process of trying to figure out how it's going to provide the safety. So this process is very functional and you want it to happen and you want it to happen well. You need this process to happen because you need, you need this. You need your brain to adjust and figure out how to create new levels of safety for you. And this right here is the result of your nervous system adjusting in response to new safety needs. Brains are good at this if they can. That process of, of doing, of processing trauma and growth and all those things that we talked about earlier, if that, if they can get this traumatic stuff through the process, they will, they will do this. It will, you will have a whole system reorganization. Your brain will create a new way of being for you in the world that is more functional and healthier than you have ever experienced. However, what's happening is this, and that means that that healing process, your survival system is standing right in front of there and it's like, you shall not pass. Right? And so now you have conflict. You have a survival conflict with, I need to understand how to make safety. And that is why you will get symptoms of anxiety, depression, and traumatic stress. That conflict between your survival system and your brain's need to create elevated ways of creating safety for you. So when we're using an intervention right here at that conflict level with the survival system, we're resolving the conflict that your brain has with this by influencing the survival system to move out of the way to let healing happen. And then your brain is in there like greedy people, like, oh my gosh, get as much as you can through, right? And pretty soon the survival system will, this is an art, right? Because you have to listen to the survival system. It does govern the, the pace and you have to work with it. You cannot force it. You cannot... There's a, and there's a lot of strategies in there and you have to respond to it. You have to, this whole healing thing is a dance with your survival system. 
And let me tell you, do not piss your survival system off and expect to get results because it is very creative and it will create not only a block here, it will create a block for how you pushed it the last time and make sure you never do that again. And you don't want this in your life. You don't want your brain working against you, strategizing against you and your healing and your efforts to heal. And this is why many people have a difficult time going back to therapy because they had a traumatic event in therapy. Maybe they were reliving their trauma, whatever. And then the survival system's like, you, I can't believe you did this to us. And then it starts associating therapy is not safe. And you'd like to try therapy with this other person. But now your survival system's like, not only are we not talking about those memories, but we're never going back to therapy. And I will make you throw up all the way to therapy if you want to mess with me. I'm against this. I'm going to let you know. And I, I've got your whole nervous system. I'll actually make you faint, fall asleep, and stay in bed for three days before you go there. And that makes that you only get four days to live your life just because you're trying to mess around with some therapy. And I told you we're not going there. Don't do this. Do not start a fight with your survival system. As far as I'm concerned, your survival system is VIP. Uh, would you like some champagne? Would you like to put your feet up? Oh, you're mad about something? Tell me more. Okay? That's what we're trying to do up in here. We want a happy survival system that says, oh, it's okay if we let this healing happen. Oh, she's listening to me. I like that. I'm being respected. Oh, I'm being catered to. Okay, okay. Right? That's really what we want to happen. Okay? So, okay. This is your brain on trauma. And so the job here is to start this process. Right. And so you had a traumatic event and you just it's starting to just regulate. That's all we need to doing during that time. We're not judging the process. We're not doing anything. We are trying to. Excuse me. We're, we're trying to bring regulation back in to repattern um, regulation. Maybe your brain is thinking, oh, my gosh, everybody's going to this is going to happen to everybody. I love we want to start regulating. Oh my gosh, what did they say to me? What did they think we want to regulate? Because when we're regulating, this right here is when all of the other parts of the brain are moving things through. It's safe to move things through. Survival systems chill. Let's go. Move. Pull this stuff through. Right? And so the more we get this, the more healing happens. So our goal after traumatic events is just comforting the nervous, the survival system. That's it. And pretty soon with that, it starts to make sense of all the stuff it got through because the other part of your brain is in there and it's like weaving this new way of being in the world, but it needs all the pieces over there that the survival system is blocking, right? And so we are working here with the survival system. We're like, open up, buddy. And this part goes over there and does this and they hand it to the, the little one that's knitting your new way of being in the world. And this one is just, wow, this is that and this is that. And okay, if we try this, no, that's not going to work. It's got to undo some stitches. Okay. And then it's just weaving over here as fast as it can with all this stuff that's coming through. Right. And pretty soon it's got, it's figuring things out. It's figuring out how to be in the world, even though this happened. Right? It's creating a new way of being that is bigger and more expanded than was before. Right, And so as you keep regulating, it's learning how to do that new safety system, that new safety plan for you, that new generating feelings of safety. Right, And so isn't this a beautiful process? It's ugly. I don't want really to trauma on anybody, but can we just for a moment be a huge fan of brains? And... Um, and this is the process of post-traumatic growth. This is why there is such a thing as post-traumatic growth. Because your brain will knit you a whole new way of being that is, that is bigger, that is more expanded, that is, is huge. And we want it to do that and we want to empower it to do that and we want to work with it to do that. And if, it's got, if you've got symptoms of anxiety, depression, traumatic stress, that conflict right there, you're, that's evidence of conflict. Right? And so that's really where you want to intervene and let, because one part of your brain is going no, and one of your brain is going this way, and they're meeting right here and causing panic attacks, racing thoughts, fear, angry outbursts, all your survival responses, fight, flight, freeze, and faint, worry, um, ex excessive looping, excessive worry loops, spirals downward. That's all 
the that's all evidence of that conflict right there at that that the gate and so your survival system does want you to be safe and it's it, it's actually doing its function it's not malfunctioning it just isn't functioning it's supposed to keep you from 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 danger but when your thoughts are dangerous that's a problem right and when i mean we need to anyway you you're picking up what i'm putting down um I, that's the end of my um my I want to, I have some thoughts and I want to also deal with my sneeze. Okay. So just hold on a second. Okay. When you got to be a real person up here <laughs> with sneezing and anyway, um, so that's the deal and there's a lot more steps in here you know when i'm when i i send in my program right my program is about doing this work it's not about learning how like there's some really great books about how to do that i mean about what happens how the brain grows the body keeps the score phenomenal um there's some there's people are talking about this they're talking about hey you can heal hey this is what it would feel like to be this way but really my work is the guide the steps to take to actually do the work of rewiring right and so when I'm talking about, and most of my videos, if you're watching them, I talk about how to intervene and how to do this. But I, but I, when I give somebody an assignment, or when you get the first assignment in my in my program, I'm telling you to do a specific task to do a. I'm actually helping you map out all your symptoms, right? And then how to use interventions to intervene with those symptoms. And it's a very step by step process because you're gonna you're learning the two step dance of regulation and getting rid of symptoms and helping your brain through its healing process. This is what I'm having you do, right? I'm telling you, do this thing, <laughs> get your paper and your pen, and we're going to learn to do this, right? And you're learning this. This is the other underlying piece that you're learning. And you're creating this. And you're already starting this process. But this isn't something I tell you that you're doing except for today because I was working with a client. I drew her some of these maps and I was like, ah, I have maps and words. So, um, but I have always known that I'm always stacking function in the activities that I give you to do. When you're doing one thing, you're actually doing three to six things, layers of work with your healing, with your brain work each time you're doing one thing. And so, by the time you get this one down and you know how to do this, now I'm going to add some more steps into it. You know, maybe we're doing the salsa now, you know, and we're doing the, we're doing a little bit more to it. And so in each step of the way, you're doing the whole dance and I'm making sure you can do each function well. And you're doing this and then your brain is moving and you're watching your brain from the inside out and you're like, okay. And then I'm going to tell you, get back to work, <laughs> do your two steps. <laughs> Because you can get caught up in watching your brain be like, wow. It's like, okay, get back to work. And um, actually, even about after 10 hours of doing this, which um, when I have you do the two hours a day strategy, after about the 10th the hour of this work, you feel a lot different. Your brain is changing. Your symptoms are different. You're responding in different ways. You're like, I usually used to get fully caught up in this. Now I'm not, it's still happening. I can't stop it yet, but I've, I'm, it's not as intense and I can observe myself while I'm doing it. Some other people are like, that is gone. I used to do that. And I have a client, um, uh, oh gosh, her mom was like, I feel like I have my kid back. Like after like two weeks, a week of this work. And it's just like, it's just, if brains are awesome. You know, I, I wish it was me. I know that I am some awesome, okay? But your brain really is phenomenal. And you may not know that if you have symptoms of anxiety, depression, traumatic stress, because it's not functioning right. But you are not the problem. Your brain is not the problem. It's a small function in your brain that just needs support. So, um, so um, let's see. I feel like I want to say some more things around this. Let me check my paper so I can be thorough. Um, 
So the one of the goals are is that we're retraining the nervous system, right? That's that's the fundamental layer that's going on this whole place. Um, and you also get the accumulative benefit, and that's really what we're going after. When you use these interventions to hit one symptom and knock one symptom out, that's great, and you're going to feel amazing. And there's a cumulative benefit of, of regulating and repeatedly regulating the nervous system that we're really after. Okay, so some people stop after they get rid of this and that. You know, they're like, whew, I'm not having panic attacks driving my car anymore. I'm good. Um, no, maybe. I don't know, but I don't think so. That's not usually how it works. Um, but sometimes I have clients that really resolve their whole disorder in less than 150, 20 hours, right? So it doesn't have to be a whole long time. It can't, I've seen some crazy things, but typically there's some deeper layers of rewiring that need to take place. Okay. And, oh, yes. Okay. Um, what I said I would say is that right here, I'm adjusting this. Okay, if you're dealing with complex childhood trauma, hold on, I need a new paper. Okay, I'm gonna draw this along the way. Okay, so if you've got complex childhood trauma, right? You, your safety needs are up here. Your parents gave you a neurological and um, a nervous system conditioning spot of this point right here, right? Now we start this work, my train, my train has to do all of its things. Okay, now we're doing this work. You start this inner world transformation journey and all of a sudden your brain is starting to create um, the safety, right? So it's doing the safety wave, it's growing. Now right here, an intervention happens. I mean, a, a trauma happens and it will kind of feel like you lost everything, right? It'll just, it doesn't feel good. This is a whole scramble situation um, that we want to hit hard with, with attention and intervention, right? We want to hit that up with attention and intervention, but your brain, prioritizes current trauma and it needs to so this stuff back here when you have complex childhood trauma a lot of stuff we're wiring through is stuff that happened in the past or a dysfunction like ways you're not able to function well in the present maybe you're arguing with your spouses you're fighting with your kids you're ignoring people you're shutting down you're freezing right that's the stuff we're working on to bring up function and bring healing right but let's say somebody you get fired right or you get kicked out of your your home, or your uh, you lose a, a relative, or anything happens. That's traumatic, right? So your brain is on a whole nother process, and we're not really dealing with this anymore. And not only are we not dealing with that, but now your your need for safety has elevated. So there's a lot more work to do. This can feel super overwhelming. It's not. It's this is not as terrible as what it looks like, but it is. It's not. This is. I mean. This is life. I mean, it's not about this, this, this piece right here I'm talking about is not buttercups and butterflies. This is, this is hard stuff. This is, this is the challenging stuff. And so, but what happens is now we're dealing with the trauma. And then we, when that, when that starts building in function, it'll start going back up. Right now we have a longer way to go. And so we are whipping at this point. Because we need to intervene, 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 intervene. And that's really all we need to do is the one, two, one, two, one, two, the whole way through. And lots of comfort, lots of regulating, lots of soothing, all that stuff. And then brains will be able to do the work of going up here. But so sometimes with child, complex childhood trauma, your life is on fire. And so there are traumas happening over and over and over and over and over again, right? You're... Um, you know, your relationship ends, 
you know, your kid hates you, um, your kids get bullied at school. These are all traumas. This keeps going up. This is a lot of work. And this is when, this is when I have clients that take longer than, than two to six months. Right. And that's okay. We risked it. We're going to get to the top. We're going to rock this because usually this stuff, um, the higher your functioning gets, the, the less trauma is being pulled into your life. And the less, the less you're being traumatized, the less you're traumatizing others, the less you're being traumatized, the less trauma, like there's, a, there, when we start like this, it's kind of like a trauma whirlwind. We're just, I don't, I don't, and I don't want to insult anybody and I don't know how that works exactly, but I do know that when we don't, when we're not functioning as well, we have, we're more vulnerable right, to abusers, to traumatic situations, to, you know, not solving our problems. When we're not solving our problems, we can't pay our bills. We can't function in daily life. You know, our things break down and that's traumatic. And so this, in these situations, it's really important not to measure yourself with anybody else. Keep your head down and keep regulating your nervous system. Keep conditioning your nervous system, get that up. And understand that when, When you are, when you get to this point over here and you're living it up, life is still happening, right? And your brain will, once you get through one of these, oops, okay, once you get through, right, you're, you're got your needs met and you get through this and you're over here. Your brain knows now how to get from how to how to take a trauma even more like it has a new process for this function for getting from here to there. So as you keep going, it does this better and faster all the time. And that's we want to teach the brain how to do this work so it can snowball these effects for you and it will reduces the amount of suffering that you're experiencing experience and shortens the time between these things. Right and life happens. And so we want your brain to be functioning as well as possible while life is happening around you. And whatever your path is, that we've got your nervous system in its best possible place to heal, to upgrade, to create new ways of being in the world, to keep trying things out, to keep experimenting, to keep being creative. We want it to create, create, create. So that's, that's really what's happening with that. So... Okay, so Elizabeth's asking a good question. How do they know when they've completed the work, especially if it's a situation with history of complex childhood trauma coupled with current ongoing trauma? Well, if, it's, if you've got current ongoing trauma, you're, you, you're not done with the work and because trauma in and of itself creates a lot of need for brain work to be going on. And so it's really important during traumatic events that we support the brain, I think, because I am a suffering minimalist. Like I, or I, I, I don't want to see people suffering and I want people to move through suffering or to go through trauma with the least amount of suffering possible. And so if, if current trauma is going on, there's still brain work to do, period. If you rock this and you got through, and, and this is what happens, this happens to me, and this is how we do things, is that you really, you build all this wellness, you build all this brain function in, and you're up here, and then even if you grow, which I'm going to do a video about this re yeah, soon, um, if you grow, you're out of your comfort zone, and your brain's freaking out, it's like, I don't know how to be out here, right? And it's, that's a kind of a mini trauma, and your brain will go through the process, or it will self-sabotage and bring you back down. Right. But let's say you build all this wellness. And in my case, my mom passes away. That was very traumatic. Right. My brain was like, I don't even know. Right. And I had to do the brain work of creating a new way of being in the world. Still working on it, but I'm not suffering in the process. Right. And, you know, we're going about our life and, you know, COVID happens. This is traumatic. This is, people are experiencing a lot of trauma around COVID. This is time for brain work. 
So um, how you know that you have completed the work is when um, the nature of, to qualify for an anxiety, depression, or trauma disorder, because everybody has symptoms of anxiety, anxiety depression, and traumatic stress or post-traumatic stress, right? Everybody has that. It becomes a disorder when it's interrupting and interfering with your daily function. Right. So when you when it's interrupting with your daily function, that is a problem. And this is your function at work, your function as a parent, your function as a, a spouse in your relationships. As if you can't fulfill your your what you need to do in order to function well in your life, you have a disorder. So to resolve this, we need to resolve the function the the dysfunction that the symptoms cause you here. So if you don't have, let's say you're working with your relationship and you're guys fighting, 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 and you're like, we're on the brink of divorce. And right. Um, that's traumatic, right? And so right here, we and, and what a lot of times happening is that safety issue is going off. Your nervous system is so dysregulated that you can't get into your prefrontal cortex where you can be creative and create solutions for repairing work and for creating new ways of being with your spouse. You're stuck in your survival system, which is just reacting, right? And so when we can generate feelings of safety in this area, even if nothing changes, brains are good at this, People talk about that all the time. When we can get that regulated state in the situations where your symptoms are showing up, pretty soon your ability to function in that relationship increases and then problem solving begins. And then you, you start creating new ways of being in the world and you level into your the next level of that relationship, whatever that may be. That's not really my business. And as I've told you in many videos before, you, I am not a marriage therapist. You don't want my marriage advice. But it is important that your brain is functioning well in those areas and function is restored, right? If your trauma is preventing you from going to school and taking your classes, we need to make that stop. And so we work in there with your how your nervous system is being dis, is dysregulating. We know that this is done when you're like, I'm at school, I'm doing my thing, my brain is working, I'm not blacking out, I'm not freezing, I'm able to do my work and turn it in. You're functioning there. Your brain is not inhibiting your function, right? It, we know that your disorder is not interfering with your relationship with your children because instead of um, getting really angry, screaming at everybody and running to your bedroom, all of a sudden, whatever was dysregulating you, we're regulating, 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 regulating. Your brain's like, oh, I bet we could try this because now it's moving into the part of the brain that's creative and problem solving and it's creating new ways of being for you. Now it's creating a new way of being for you with your kids. And it says, try that. And then you go in there and you're with your kids and you the same. they do the same thing. But instead, you're like, talking with them and you're, you're, you're working it out. And next thing you know, you're like, Rachel, <laughs> I rock that. That's where you're functioning, right? And so that's really what we're looking for there. And we know that we're done with the work when you're functioning everywhere. And then what will happen is you will just, life will, you'll have a surplus of awesome and then you say, I wanna grow. And then you'll start the brain work process all over again. But it'll be easier because you already did it once and your brain's like, oh, I know what we're doing here. You know, so that so we we know that um, the work is done when you're functioning well. If your anxiety is interfering with your business, right? You want to be um, having these calls or having these tough conversations, conflict resolution with your staff or or with whatever, and you can't because you're gonna throw up. Your chest is in a knot, tight. And you know your mind is whirling and racing, and you can't get the words out your mouth. Your brain function is is your symptoms of anxiety depression and traumatic stress are compromising your ability to function and so we want to get in there and regulate 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 solve that function problem solve the you're pulling the symptoms through and you're getting the brain to do the healing work which naturally resolves the function problem and next thing you know your brain over here creating a new way of being for you knitting. You can see I do not know how to knit. And because this is how I think it happens. Um, and so and then it's got it says, Oh, try this and throws you a new idea. And it starts working with once the new way of being is done, 
it really goes into the subconscious programming and comes out naturally. You actually start doing things and then you notice, you're like, hey, I just did something different here. Because it's not something you have to think about because you're not functioning from willpower, you're actually functioning from a healthy subconscious program. Huge. This makes a huge difference. And it's easy that way. And we really want to lead the transformation in our lives and in our function with our brain. It's our brain's job to solve that. And when our brain isn't working very well, a lot of times we've just learned, move, I got this, and we'll go and willpower. And that's exhausting. And your whole brain is like, I don't want to do this. And pretty soon it finds a loophole, it gets under your arm, and it's like, ha. And it drives you off into the weeds again. And then you, you got to go wrestle it up again and like, no, we're going in this direction. You will not yell at your children. You know, it, it's just, it, you can't do all the fighting of all the battles. You really need your brain to do its job and really make your life easier for you. And so that's really, for me, my assessment tool for uh, when people are done with the work, because you're never done with the work when they no longer meet criteria for an anxiety, depression, or trauma disorder. Like for instance, one of my clients recently came in with low self-esteem, um, dysfunction in their relationship with their children, their ex-wife, um, uh, paralysis at work, um, and a couple of other things, and social anxiety, right? And so in each area we went through and then we created a plan for, okay, we're gonna deal first with with the low self-esteem. Okay, well that changed into the kids and that changed into this and that changed. And then we did another round and we started working here and more deeply, right? But the brain is weaving the whole thing. And so within, I think it was four months, I kept, I would come back and check the situation of kids is great, love is flowing, um, boundaries are, are secure and steady and strong, the the self-esteem is happening, he's um, reaching out to friends, like the, the they're not getting frozen anymore. So it's like all the things we were looking for is not happening anymore. So then <laughs> I'm checking, but what if this happens? <laughs> and that thing that would, would have made him like, in the beginning, I I don't poke anybody, right? Because it's wounds. But afterwards, I'm like, yeah, but <laughs> what if this worst case scenario that they have said, not that I'm inventing for them, but I know their nervous system has been terrified of this. So I'll, and they're like, yeah, you know, well, this is what I would do. And, you know, that's already happened. And, right? Their brain has already created a function for that. Their brain has already healed the wound there. You can poke it all you want. There's no, there's no reactivity. And so that's, for me, my assessment tool. And then I'm like, because I help people with problems. <laughs> if I can't find a problem, uh, you've graduated. <laughs> Go on to your next, you know, your next adventure. And people have, you know, brains, when you notice problems, then, then you get in there and do the work. But since I'm also training people to work on their own problems and to notice and be aware of when their brain is having problems, people will take care of their own problems and if they can't then they'll make another appointment one or two then they go on and do their thing right or if they want support through a trauma that's something we can do because brains require an adjustment period to create a new way of being in the world with trauma so um uh, thank you, Elizabeth, for the condolences. And um, I previously, <laughs> anyway, requested none of that because I was like, I am a fabulous, ugly crier and you do not want to see me go at this for the world championship. But I'm really um, able to think about this without that kind of emotional pain at the moment. So, but still processing, still working through all of the emotions and um, yeah, let's see. I want to not go down that rabbit hole right now. We don't need this in our lives right now. Um, let's see. Yeah, that's the deal. And, and you know, that just thing that I did that I don't want to go down the rabbit hole right now is a really important skill to have. And what happens with anxiety, depression, traumatic stress, you don't usually get a choice. You're going down the rabbit hole and you're going down at mock speed. Right. And so that's that's not that's dysfunctional when you don't have a choice, you know, you're in the back of the brain and, you know, a lot of healing has happened because you do get a choice. 
um, things happen and it doesn't spring out tears and agony and those sorts of things. And you can choose how you want to behave. I do have a rabbit hole. I, I am still in the grieving process, but I do get to choose when I want to go down there and when I don't. And that that's a healthy function. And I will take care of it, right? I'm not going to use it for suppression tactics. Um, I, I don't like I, I respect my inner world and the punishment that it can throw over my head, and I don't need that in my life. Um, I like to listen. <laughs> when they talk back there, I'm all ears. Um, anyway, so I was telling <laughs> I was telling somebody, you know, I have been so mentally ill with anxiety and, and complex childhood trauma that I could not solve my problems. And I, the agony and pain and hell that I lived from and tried to parent from is not something I, I'm highly motivated not to do that again. And I was telling them, if nobody uses my program, I'm gonna use my program. <laughs> my program gets plenty of use because it, you know, with our inner world, we need strategies because it's like, we live here. You know, it's like with your house, you don't not do the dishes. You don't not clean up the water that's on the floor. You know, you you get you take care of stuff when it's small and you just keep living in your in your life. And our brains are the same place. We really just want to take good care of them because they're that's where all this stuff comes from. That's where our ability to create the life of our dreams is really, really helpful. Yes, Josh. <laughs> Alex Josh Paul says, step back from the rabbit hole. <laughs> yes step away. And in, when working with people, I teach that strategy a lot. And we work on it until the brain can actually do the function. Because if, if every time we try to do something, you slide down the rabbit hole into trauma land and you're getting re-traumatized, we're not going to make it very far. Because your brain is going to be like, uh-uh, no. And it's going to do that working against you function. And now you're fighting your nervous system. We really want to do the work with as least amount of pain as possible. And so um, the ability to step back away from the rabbit hole is a sign of function. And, and it, but let me tell you, if you avoid the rabbit hole completely and entirely and make a lifetime mission out of it, this is dysfunction. Okay. This says you don't have the tools for it. Get those. Okay. This was awesome. Let me tell you a couple things. One, if you are interested in doing this work with me, you can go to my website. I've linked to it at the top of this, rachelmccloud.com. And there you can learn about opportunities to work with me. And from there also, you can watch another video about, it says the eight steps, but I did that wrong. It's the five steps um, to um, getting rid of symptoms. You can learn more. You can go to my Facebook page and my Facebook group. And in there, I teach these interventions for free. So you can jump in there, watch those videos, try out interventions, take taking full responsibility for your participation in them and understanding that these are interventions and may or may not work well for you. Um, I talk about that in there and you'll get a gauge. Listen to yourself. And um, these interventions I teach in there are the ones I found to have the least amount of side effects. And some of them have no known side effects, which makes it wonderful. Um, you can also know, learn about the ways to work with me specifically. I have an intensive um, um, coaching program and I have an uh, eight week self-study course. But the eight intensive program is eight weeks and then the um, self-study is eight weeks. Um, people are getting wonderful results from those phenomenal. And uh, there's an eight month track, which allows people to get the take a little bit a longer time. Also for people that are budget minded, the, it allows you to break up the investment, the, the enrollment fee into smaller chunks. And so those are available. You can go on there. If you want to do the self study track, you can start that whenever you're ready start that now. Um, I asked one of my the the clients that is taking the self study course, I asked her, I was like, why'd you choose that one? Like, I got no, I'm just totally curious. I got no, I wanted to know her thought process around it. She was so generous. And um, she made one of the statements I would have totally made is that I didn't want anybody seeing me go through this. <laughs> she didn't say it like that. But that's really what she was saying. And I was like, I hear you, sister, because I, I'm, I'm not that kind of like, so <laughs> I, when I first started this work, I couldn't I couldn't cry in front of anybody. I, could, I was so fragile inside that I could, would have never gone to a therapist. 
And I really wanted to make this available so that you, if you, that's you, you could still access healing and you could still get some wonderful healing work done. And if you're committed to do yourself and you do this work, you will rock your disorder out the park if you follow the instructions, right? Do the work. It's a working program. Um, but so that's a really great um, program to do if you're wanting to have some privacy while you do it. Or some people have taken it and done it with another therapist. Like they have a therapist that's really supportive. And so they'll do the, the program while doing the work with a therapist. And I made it for that. I made it to, I tried to create a tier of work for everybody. And if you want my support to guide you through every step of the work, and you want to do this with me intensively, I have an intensive program for you. You can find that on my website, learn about that, see if that's the right fit for you. And, um, and then it shows you how to take the next steps if that's what you want to do. There's a questionnaire you can fill out and I'll reach out to you by email and we'll, we'll figure out how to figure out if this is the next right step for you. And if that's the next right step, you can get started right away. So that is what I want to share. There's tons of ways I can support you. I want to support you in this work and whether it's just learning the interventions and many interventions. I'm trying to do one new intervention a month. Um, so that's in there and in my Facebook group and that's it. Oh, and you can jump on my mailing list. I write um, posts in very detail about how to do this to shift your beliefs around the work, to teach you new things, um, uh, to inspire you, and to show you how the process works in motion. And so you can get on my email list if if that interests you. If you would, if you like what I'm writing, or you like to receive information by writing, you know, some people are video people, um, some people are all the things. And so you can join my mail list, my email list, as well. And I didn't say this. I'm just. I get, I get, um, my ending here is just however it is. Um, I want to say this. I also have a, a YouTube channel that has over 100 videos on it. And so I would encourage you, if you are a video person, to subscribe to that. And you'll keep getting updates when I upload a new video, which I'm uploading about one a week. And you'll get access to the uh, almost 100 videos I've already done. So... That's that. Okay, Corey, I'm going to answer Corey's question. Do I work with teens? I do. I'm working with all genders now, and, and I'm working with teens. And so with the teens, I teens can go through my coaching program. They do a really good job with that, um, at 14 and over. And they have to be the right kind of fit. So if you have a teen and you're, you want to know if they would, because you have to, you have to want to, and be able to conceptualize your brain. I don't know how to say that yet. I'm going to think about how to say that. But if you have a teen and you want to see if they're a good fit, grab a spot on my calendar. You can find that on my website. Um, it, it, it's a little pink thing. It'll say, you know, underneath the opportunity, grab a spot on my calendar and we'll talk about it. Um, I'm not going to add that here because I want people to jump on my website and learn and read so I can minimize the number of questions I answer. Uh, so I'm being totally selfish there. But if you if if you're not getting things or you want just like I don't process with reading because it's a real thing. Um, send me a message. I'm happy to answer your questions. I'm happy to jump on the phone. Um, but I am working with teenagers 14 and up. As long as they're the right fit, most teenagers are. And if they want to do this work and they're willing to do some tapping and some breathing interventions, working with their survival system, those sorts of things to do this work, I absolutely will do that with them. So uh, that's a good question. And I don't have anything on my website for that yet. I've been thinking about how to do that. I mostly have just been posting at, like, I posted my first um, offer statement about that. Just, I'm taking, I'm working with four, four teenagers. If this sounds like the right thing for you, let me know. So, but, so for teens on my website, especially because, yeah, I have work to do there. You, you just, you caught me on my growing edge. So, but the answer is yes. Um, I love working with teenagers. They heal so fast. They're so phenomenal. And then I'm just so, I, I tell you that all the time when I talk about working with teens, but they're, um, 
they're just, I just think when as their brains are healing and they're grasping concepts because their brains are just you know seeing things from multiple perspectives because teens can get stuck in their survival system too and when you're back there you can't see anything from anybody else's perspective but your own you know and all of a sudden their whole brain is working and they're seeing this from multiple perspectives and they're getting the dynamics involved i'm just like oh my god that's so cool i wish i my brain was working like that i had this work then so um i will work on that i'm going to try to work on that upgrade that up to that you know I'm gonna to try to add that to my website this week. But in the meanwhile, I do work with teens. Definitely reach out to me about what that looks like and what your teens needs are. And I um, will talk about the program that I have, the intensive coaching program, or we can um, look at um, something a little bit more customized. I'm trying to figure out a, a way to work with teenagers. I'm gonna tell you this, and then you can give me some feedback. Because they heal so quickly, I'm thinking about doing shorter term program, but I don't want to underdo it because I want to rock the whole thing out. Number two, I think, man, you know, they probably only need to meet once a week. We, we you know, that would be one way to bring the program intensity down. Um, but then I think, but then are they going to do the work between sessions? <laughs> so some of that is accountability. And so I really have been doing something very similar to the adult program and that's that's really what I will be doing with the teens at this point. Unless I hear from you all who have fantastic ideas. And after working with enough teens in coaching as opposed to in therapy, um, I will get a feel for that more and I will then package it to what I the, the patterns I see that teens need. So, um, so that's where we're at with that. Okay. Wonderful connecting with you all. This was so much fun. Thank you for watching my diagrams, you know, participating, hanging out with me. And if you did not watch this, if you're getting on just now and you didn't watch the beginning, the hundred and uh, the one hour and 26 minutes before, um, watch this video. You know, this is, this was a really good one. So <laughs> Corey's, I'm tracking you. <laughs> awesome. I love it. I welcome that. It's so good to see you. Uh, all right. Be well and enjoy whatever journey you take and definitely add in this knowledge of regulating your nervous system and reconditioning it to be to generate safety and wellness for you. Take care.